straight to the question of whether the president or the people around him obstructed justice, specifically with talk of possible pardons. Now, just the latest and potentially most explosive detail yet to emerge from roughly 400 pages of newly revealed House testimony. Our, uh, Evan Perez joins us. Evan, you've been pouring through these, uh, these documents. What have you learned? Well, one of the explosive charges that uh, Michael Cohen makes is uh, surrounding this issue of pardons. And he says that the White House raised the issue of pardons and specifically because they wanted to essentially shut down the Russia investigation. I'll read you just a part of uh, the exchange that happened uh, in the 15 hours of testimony that Michael Cohen gave to the House. He said, quote, uh, the, the, the question from, uh, to, to Michael Cohen is, is it your testimony that whatever discussions that Jay Sekulow had regarding pardons was done with the knowledge Knowledge and authority of the president, Cohen says, I believe so. Jay Sekulow, of course, is the president's personal attorney who is handling a lot of these inquiries, Anderson. And then there's a second part of this where he says, where the question goes, uh, was it something that you thought, that you sought from the White House or they raised with you? Cohen says, uh, they raised the topic and what they, uh, what they were doing, including publicly, they were dangling the concept of pardons. And the purpose, of course, was to keep everybody part in the joint defense team. According to Cohen, this was a joint defense team that was essentially only verbal. There was no written language uh, to support the idea that there was a joint de de defense agreement between Cohen and some of the other people, of course, who were part of this investigation, Anderson. So specifically, what did he say about Jay Sekulow? Because Jay Sekulow is, is, was the president's, one of the president's attorneys. Right, exactly. He says that in particular, Jay Sekulow had a lot of these conversations with him. And one of the accusations uh, that he makes is that Jay Sekulow uh, suggested to him that he give false testimony in particular uh, about the Trump Tower Moscow project. You remember that Michael Cohen uh, falsely testified that all of those discussions ended in January of 2016 as a way to essentially get uh, away, and, uh, away from the presidential campaign. Well, it turns out those discussions happened way into the year, uh, much longer than Michael Cohen had first uh, testified. And so according to his newer testimony, he says that Jay Sekulow uh, helped coordinate that false testimony. Now, if you uh, believe uh, Sekulow and the White House, they say that, of course, Michael Cohen cannot be believed. And the reason why they gave the January 2016 date, uh, Anderson, is because that's all of the documentation they had. From looking at the documents, that's the last they ever saw any mention of the Trump Tower project in Moscow. I mean, these are pretty explosive allegations, uh, obviously, particularly against Sekulow. Does Cohen have any proof? He, he does not. He has very little uh, to corroborate what he is saying here. And again, that's the, the weakness of, of some of this testimony. Uh, he makes a lot of allegations, and a lot of it is either him inferring, again, if you see that, that exchange uh, about what he believes the president would have known, simply because he says Seculo would have been talking to the president. Now, he doesn't know what those conversations were. And so he's making a lot of leaps in some of this testimony. And again, I think the White House believes that you can't, uh, the fact that, that, that uh, Michael Cohen is now in prison in part for lying to Congress, they say, is proof that he should not be believed. All right, Evan Perez, thank you. Joining us now, former Deputy Assistant Attorney General Elliot Williams, and back with me here, CNN Chief Legal Analyst uh, Jeffrey Tubin. Uh, Elliot, how does this transcript reconcile with the trail already laid out in the Mueller report and in the president's tweets about Trump Tower Moscow? Right. So it's interesting. We under nor in a normal world, we would have every reason to disbelieve Michael Cohen as a not particularly credible witness because he's already pled guilty to a lying offense. The problem is we now have a long pattern laid out in Section 2 of the Mueller report of the president engaging in largely similar conduct of trying to get people to, at best, be cute with their stories and, at worst, lie. And we've seen it again and again and again, and it sort of happened multiple times. And so, to some extent, Michael Cohen's statements are at least uh, supported and, you know, at best corroborated by some of the conduct that we've seen uh, throughout Section 2 of the Mueller report. So. Um, so again, you know, and this is piggybacking on something Evan had said, he's, he's a not wonderful witness, to put it charitably, but again, um, we, you know, we've just seen this pattern from the president once again, uh, and it yeah. should surprise no one. Yeah, but Jeff, I mean, uh, there's a difference between the president and Jay Sekulow. Jay Sekulow is an attorney. He's obviously very smart about what he can or should or should not say legally. He did publicly say something that was not true. He said he was given, he had the wrong information when he said that the president did not dictate uh, the, uh, the response about the Russia meeting on Air Force One. That turned out not to be true. Um, but this is essentially putting Jay Sekulow 
I mean, again, there's no direct evidence of this, but it's if it's true, it's a pretty big allegation. But it is similar to the, the other situation that you just described in that Seculo is dealing with information given to him by his client. I mean, Jay Seculo doesn't have independent knowledge of when the Trump Tower ne Moscow negotiations ended in 2016. He seems to be trying to convince Michael Cohen to line up his story with Donald Trump, but that doesn't mean that he, that, that he knew the story was false. And, and as for the, the issue of pardons, I mean, it, it sounds to me, I mean, I, I read the testimony too, it's sufficiently general that it does not seem like it's an outright promise. But the falsehoods here seem to come more from Donald Trump than from Jay Sekulow. Jay Sekulow does not seem to be engaging in any sort of improper conduct. Mm. The, uh, Elliot, in one of the transcripts that was released, Cohen testified that, quote, virtually all my conversations were referred back to the client. Uh, Jay wasn't going to speak on behalf of the president. He was relaying messages back and forth. So if Seculo isn't giving counsel, but instead just acting as a mouthpiece, is he still, I assume he's still protected by attorney-client privilege? He is. Now, again, the question is, um, uh, you know, the attorney-client privilege can't be a total shield for criminality if, in fact, uh, you know, he is concealing uh, criminal conduct. The question is, what did he know? And this is exactly what we've been talking about. Was he aware he was directing an individual to tell an untruth on behalf of the President of the United States? Now, again, and this gets this piggybacks on what Jeffrey had said, there's a lot of speaking in generalities here that we've sort of seen, again, throughout the Mueller report, but also in, a, you know, a pattern of behavior from the President of the United States. And so the generalities and the, you know, the wink and the nods that seem to characterize so much of the behavior from the president of the United States. And so, again, there's a lot of conduct that we're seeing once again, you know, in this uh, testimony tonight that steps up to the line of propriety, uh, maybe doesn't step over it, you know, perhaps can't be charged, probably can't. But again, is it appropriate conduct for a president of the United States? And again, and I'm saying president of the United States, you know, his attorney's acting as his agent. Um, so I don't want to uh, suggest that Seculo's uh, hands are entirely clean uh, with respect to his conduct, um, if, if he is, in fact, acting as an agent of the president. But isn't it all this stuff that Mueller had, would have seen? Yes, and, and basically the story that Michael Cohn is, is telling here is consistent with the Mueller report. Right. I mean, you know, one uh, you know, th this, is, this whole area is one of the areas of, of possible obstruction of justice. This just underlines why it's important to have live witnesses and actual testimony about these things rather than just the Mueller report itself, which, you know, people, it's all based on Mueller's conclusions. But if the, the witnesses come forward, either in transcript or better yet as live witnesses, people can make up their own minds about who's telling them. There is a big difference between reading some, a report, which frankly most Americans have not read, at 448 pages, single space, and seeing actually somebody on television in their own words. Uh, th it. That's why Don McGahn's testimony Mueller's testimony is so important. Most people get their information through television, through video. And the notion that the Mueller report is good enough, it just doesn't comport with the reality of modern life. Yeah.